Okay, so the next topic that we're going to talk about is machine translation. Machine translation is one of the most exciting uh, areas of natural language processing research. So why is it important? Well, uh, there are more than 7,000 languages in the world. Uh, it turns out that the majority of the documents, however, on the web are in English. So as you can see from this diagram, about 55% are in English. Uh, then you have small segments in languages like Russian, German, Spanish, Chinese, and French, and smaller percentages in other languages. So the remaining close to 7,000 languages have only 11%. This is in stark contrast with the number of internet users in the world. So in that uh, second diagram, you can see that English and Chinese speakers are from the majority of internet users, followed by Spanish and Japanese and so on. And the percentage for speakers of other languages, in the languages that are not in the top 10 goes up to 17%. So since most of those uh, people speak only one or maximum of two languages, uh, it is very common that they would encounter a document on the web that is in a language other than their own. So for that uh, to be avoided, we need to come up with ways to translate text automatically. So this is exactly what machine translation does. So let me show you now a little picture. Uh, this is a famous painting by Peter Borgo, uh, a famous painter from 1563, depicting the Tower of Babel. So there's a biblical story that says that uh, people were only speaking one language at the time, and then when they built the Tower of Babel, uh, God created all the different languages so people couldn't talk to each other uh, so easily. So we are trying to uh, solve this problem now by creating machine translation systems. Okay, so now let's see how machine translation works. So most of the modern uh, translation uh, software is based on statistics. And uh, uh, I'm going to show you as an example the so-called Rosetta Stone, which illustrates how statistics can be used uh, to translate languages. So here's what the Rosetta Stone looks like. It has inscriptions in three languages, one of which is shown here. This is Egyptian, and then at the top, and then Greek in the middle. This uh, stone was carved in Egypt in 196 BC and it was only deciphered by more contemporary humans by uh, Champollion in 1822. And the way he deciphered it was to figure out that those texts, even though they were in different languages, were translations of one another. And he was able to figure out, uh, using some pattern recognition, or manual pattern recognition, which symbols in one of the languages matched which symbols in the other language. So if you're interested in the Rosetta Stone in more detail, uh, you can go to this website and look at the entire text and the alignments. So here's a NACLO problem uh, that is very similar to the Rosetta Stone. In fact, this category of problems in NACLO is called the Rosetta Stone problems. It was written by Simon Swartz based on uh, work by Kevin Knight. So here's what the problem looks like. Uh, it is not about the real human language, although there is a little uh, twist to what I just said, uh, which I'm going to explain in a few minutes. So instead, we're going to focus on uh, the story described in this problem, specifically that this is uh, about Arcturan, which is an uh, intergalactic language. And you have uh, come up with some communication from a uh, foreign uh, constellation uh, in this language. And you know that each sentence on the left is uh, in cent the Centauri language, and each sentence on the right is in the Arcturan language. And now the question is, can you figure out which word in one of the languages matches which word in the, the other language? So how would you do this? So I'm going to let you think, and uh, you can do this by looking at the next couple of slides, and then I'm going to show you the answer. So the specific task in NACLU was to find uh, individual words. So for example, the word Farok in Centauri. So that word appears in two of the sentences. And then what you need to do is to figure out which sentences in Arcturan those correspond to and see if there is one single word in those two sentences that appears only in them and not in any of the other sentences. So you can continue doing this for the other sentences and the other words until you have unique translations. And here's the solution. It turns out that uh, even though those languages were labeled as Centauri and Arcturan, they're in fact English and Spanish, and this is the example that was used by Kevin Knight in 1997 to introduce how machine translation works. So every word in English and Spanish was uh, translated into some made-up word in those artificial languages. And now you can see that it makes more sense. So for example, uh, the word Garcia appears in both 
languages, English and Spanish. Uh, and since this is a person's name, we can use the principle that person names are typically left untranslated. So we can figure out that the word Voon in the two languages is the same. And you can do this uh, recursively until we figure out the rest of the words. So here is the full solution. Okay, so uh, you probably now have an idea how machine translation or statistical machine translation rather works. You need to have what is known as parallel corpora. So parallel corpus is a text in one language that is aligned to a text in another language that forms its translation. So there are many instances of parallel corpora around there. Uh, the first one is the Rosetta Stone, which is obviously very short. Then there is uh, data like the Hansard's corpus. So the Hansard's corpus is the proceedings of the Canadian Parliament, which by law has to keep all parliamentary proceedings in both French and English, which are equally official. So every time somebody speaks in English, there is an, a translation done by humans in French and vice versa. And since this is government data, it can be obtained uh, uh, very easily uh, from the Hansard's website. And most of the early statistical machine translation systems were trained using this kind of data for French and uh, English. There are many other parallel corpora available, for example, news stories that are translated in different languages, user manuals that a certain company publishes so that people in different countries can use their products. One of the most common uh, data sets used for machine translation training, which is available in uh, thousands of languages, is the Bible. So let's look at some examples. Uh, the Hansards, uh, here's an English uh, paragraph, two sentences, and their translations in French. So uh, I'll just give you an example of words that are aligned here. So government in English appears as gouvernement in French. So that's a fairly straightforward example, which also forms a cognate, or, or the two words have the same uh, historical connection. Uh, now, the next thing is Postmaster General, which gets translated as Le Ministre de Post, or in other words, the Minister of Posts. So that's not exactly the same uh, translation as Postmaster General, but it means the same person. So you can see that even though uh, those documents refer to the same person in both languages, they may use some very idiosyncratic vocabulary uh, that is not directly translatable. So here's one more example uh, from uh, a Bible uh, paragraph in English and its translation in Cebuano, which is a language from the Philippines. So let's try to figure out how we can translate those three words, God, heaven, and earth, uh, from English to Cebuano. So here's one pair of aligned sentences, then another one, and then a third one. Now, we can use a lot of information. First of all, uh, Cebuano is spoken in the Philippines. In the Philippines, uh, uh, Spanish used to be a commonly spoken language. So there are some words in Cebuano that are cognates. So for example, Dios here, uh, if you know Spanish, you can immediately figure out that it means God. But that's not the basic idea of statistical machine translation. What's more important is to look at co-occurrence statistics. So we're looking for words that appear in the same sentences in both languages and don't appear in any of the others. So for example, here, I'm going to uh, let you uh, pause for a moment to figure this out. Can you figure out what are the translations for heaven and for earth, just based on those three, three examples? So here's some of the information that you can use. Uh, co-occurrence uh, in sentences, word order, is especially among uh, across languages that are relatively similar to each other, which is probably not the case here and also cognates, which again is more useful when the languages are related. So you need to have a corpora of this nature that are aligned at the sentence level. If those are not aligned, then the first thing that you need to do for this algorithm to work is to align them automatically. Well, if they are exactly the same text, alignment actually can be done, but if they are not uh, exactly the same text, they may be just what is known as comparable corpora, then sentence alignment may be much trickier and noisier, but it is still possible to use it and build uh, translation systems purely based on comparable corpora. So here's a NACLO problem that you can uh, download. Uh, it's about uh, language similarity. Uh, you can see how often you can identify uh, cognates among languages that are historically related. So you have the first sentence of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 17 different languages. And you have to figure out 
uh, which ones of those are in the same language family because they have uh, very similar words. So the first 11 of them are shown on this slide and two of the languages are labeled as English and Latin and then you have six more on the second slide. So you should pause here and look at the last two slides and see if you can figure out which um, of those languages belong to the same family. So the answer will be shown next. So here are the seven clusters. Uh, you can look up the Universal Declaration of Human Rights on the internet to figure out which specific languages we have here, but they include uh, languages like Romanian and Italian and uh, Basque and Latvian and so on. Okay, so now we're going to stop for a moment and continue uh, with more techniques for machine translation.